Welcome to Volga River, one of the last two maps to be revealed for Battlefield 1's In the Name of the Tsar DLC, and this is another Russian Civil War map. You've got the Red Army fighting it out against the White Guard for the right to rule Russia. Of all the maps in this DLC, I'd say I'm most excited to play the Civil War map, simply because there's something we didn't expect. DICE has definitely subverted expectations with Battlefield 1 and where they'll go with the content, adding in prototype weapons and leaning heavily on locations besides the Western Front, which arguably gets most of the attention from the history books. Volga River is a snowy, undulating map, and it's set at the banks of the same river that you can see on the other Civil War map called Tsaritsyn. If you missed my video on that, you can check it linked in the description. The two maps are set fairly close together, and they come as a pair in one of the new operations that's also set to arrive with this DLC. That operation is going to be called Red Tide. The map focuses on destroyed buildings and locations scattered across a fairly flat, open landscape. This gives you plenty of solid cover to hide behind as the lines of sight, they all reach up into the middle of the map where there is a destroyed church. A network of trenches are present on this map as well, but again like the other maps we're getting in this DLC, they are fairly rudimentary, but they're deep enough to keep you concealed however. Unlike Tsaritsyn, which at the moment is a three flag map, Volga River features seven flags, and they're laid out in a 2-3-2 formation. Flags A and B are set towards the Red Army spawn, and they're fairly basic in their appearance, although they roughly connect together by a trench line, but as I mentioned, this is more of just a pathway which can be used to conceal your movement between the two. The three flags in the middle, we have C, D and E, they're all up for contention when the two armies move towards the center of the map once the round gets going. The C flag is the destroyed church I mentioned before, and it offers lots of walls, lots of structures and rubble as cover for whichever team holds onto it. It is the high point of the map too, and it's in view pretty much all the time from the other flags or the area surrounding it. So the cover up there is extremely important if you want to hold on to the position. Because it is so central, however, it's almost impossible to defend it, and you're likely going to be overrun by the enemy team pushing in on you from multiple angles. And this is very much reminiscent of the cathedral on Tsaritsyn. Rather than dice limiting access to that area, the multiple different angles that you can attack from means that gameplay is always moving around, and it doesn't get stuck with one team trying to capture the flag, and the other team simply defending for the entire round. The D flag is set to the north of the map and it's called White Barracks, so it's a location for the White Guard, but it is in the centre of the map and it's just as much a place the Red Army could go for as much as the White Guard. The name is just a name and it doesn't signify that it's any closer to the White Guard spawn. It's pretty much straight down the middle, these three flags. And the E flag, which I haven't mentioned yet, is a small set of buildings down on the river's edge, and the land drops right down here, giving you some natural cover against advancing enemies. Again, this is a point that both teams could go for at the start of a round. The remaining two flags, F and G, they're set closer to the White Guard spawn, and they mirror A and B flags in their importance, but they offer some different visuals. F is a ruined mill close to the water's edge, and it plays similarly to the church in the middle with lots of cover. And then G is sort of like this staging area where the White Guard can push onto into the map, maybe flanking round to the D point and capturing the barracks before moving up into the centre for the church fight. The map action, on average, will focus around the three flags running across the middle, and during the few rounds that I played at Gamescom, it was more about the southern parts towards the river. The D flag to the north, at least for me, didn't see as much action as the E flag, which is on the river's edge, but without a doubt, the hotbed of activity is the C flag, that ruined church right in the middle of the map. It's surrounded by lots of destroyed buildings. Some of them have still got their chimney stacks standing. That's kind of like a, a landmark feature for this map. You've got some ruined tanks thrown in there, some barbed wire, undulating terrain, lots of dirt piles, wood piles as well, and of course the trench lines, all of which block lines of sight, and they make for perfect cover for a team that's looking to work their way up to trying to capture that central flag. 
The church sits at the very top of the terrain, and it looks out down from all angles, so the team that's holding it kind of has a view of every single other flag on the map, and you have that height advantage. But it's not 100% guaranteed that you'll be able to hold on to it if you've currently got it. The outer walls have kind of been broken away in lots of places, and that means you can see right through the centre of the church where most of the players will be hiding. And that means the team holding it might be a little bit more static up there, maybe hugging the still standing walls for the little cover that they've got. That presents a perfect opportunity to the attacking team. They can just rush in and go guns blazing on them. Especially if you can team up with another player, you get double firepower on some of those guys sitting against the walls. But usually, there are so many players already in there that you'll need to work as a full team to try and take the flag. Don't just go from one point of entry, kind of surround the flag as much as you can, all push in as one unit, and you should be able to take it. Now vehicles are present on this map, but again it follows a similar setup to the other Civil War map called Zaritsen, with just Mark V British tanks being available to use, I think. This represents the British supplying the White Guard with arms and supplies during the Civil War for their fight against the Bolsheviks. The tanks work to kind of break up the infantry fights, and they can be extremely powerful if you can get five people in there, two on the cannons, two on the gunners, and a driver. But if infantry work together with their explosives, they can bring down those tanks extremely quickly. If a tank gets too aggressive and exposes itself around cover, then you can expect a load of rocket gun shells to come firing at you extremely quickly. I think you can actually see the Tsaritsyn Cathedral from the Volga River map. I think you need to look out across the river, and then you should see it on the other side. That plays a part in the Red Tide operation, where you start over here on Volga River, and then you work your way across into the city of Tsaritsyn in an attempt to capture the cathedral and the land surrounding it. Now, I said at the start of this video that DICE has done a lot to try and offer players something in Battlefield 1 that they don't necessarily expect. And these Civil War maps are a perfect example. Lots of people expected the game to be all about the Western Front. The battles there between the French, the Belgians, the British armies against the Germans in those trenches. But DICE decided to buck the trend and add in some more unknown stuff. Now, if I'm honest, I think they went too heavy on the Ottoman inclusion, having three maps in the base game as desert maps. I think most players find Foul Fortress and Suez to be not so great. I don't really enjoy desert maps all that much either, and would have preferred to see some more of the Italian front added in, maybe a mountain map with the Italians fighting against the Austro-Hungarians. But over here now, in this DLC, we've got lots of snow, lots of mountain combat, with the Russian army against the central powers in the World War I maps and against themselves in the Civil War maps. I can't wait to get into some public servers and play on these new maps. It's going to be such a good time. So overall, Volga River is a really good map for infantry fighting, but it remains to be seen with some more public matches in a public environment when the DLC launches what this map will become. As I've said, I've only played a few rounds on it so far, and that was against a lot of my friends who were at Gamescom and we were all going super keen so that we could get the win. I think the experience will likely be different, but I hope that this map holds up. It's a really good atmosphere on this one. Infantry everywhere, and then the tanks coming in, and they can be extremely scary. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments section. Maybe tell me which of the six maps you're looking forward to most of all. All six now have been revealed. We've got Lupkow Pass, Brusilov Keep, Zaritsyn, Volga River, Galicia, and Albion. There's plenty of opportunities, I think, for every single type of player in this DLC. We've got infantry action on Brusilov Keep, Zaritsyn, Volga River. Lupkow Pass brings in some aerial combat mixed in with infantry. Albion, we've got amphibious warfare and aerial combat coming together. And Galicia, I would say, is our all-out battlefield map with ground vehicles, infantry and aerial vehicles going at it across the flat lands. It's going to be a really, really cool DLC. It launches on September the 5th for premium pass owners, so just under a week now, and we'll finally have some new content to go and play with in Battlefield 1. 
Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next.